Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Max, and today I am extremely pleased to uh, have Mark from Legion of Comics on the channel today. And uh, Mark, thank you so much for, for coming on, man. How's, how's your week been? Dude, absolutely fantastic. I appreciate you inviting me. As you know, I definitely watch your content. I'm always leaving you comments. Uh, I, I love what you do. I like your perspective on it. Super grateful that you reached out and asked me to come chat with you, man. Thank you so much. No, absolutely. And and let me just say the reason why I've I've got you on here today is because I also do the same. I watch your content and knowing how much more well versed in this topic you are than myself. Um, I needed someone who I could say is an expert in this field. I know you wouldn't necessarily proclaim yourself to be, but uh, but I think so, because you've been no, doing I, it, you know, for I a while. I definitely defer to people uh, a lot better than I am, but I've gathered enough information. I think I can be helpful. Exactly, which, which is awesome. So I do appreciate you coming on as well. And so for those of you who don't know what CDC is or what's going on with these price hikes, price hikes Essentially, CGC is a comic book grading company. Um, if you guys have seen these before, they look kind of like enclosed um, slabs that have uh, grades on them. Yep, exactly. And so you can get anywhere from a 0 0.5 to a 10, which is a perfect grade. Now, CGC has been in the game for actually relatively not as long as as I would think, right? And you mm -hmm. could correct me if I'm wrong. They're the oldest standing one. And they only go back to like the early 2000s or the late 90s or something like that. That's right. That's right. And so relatively speaking, yeah, that it really is a, a kind of new company when it comes to grading comic books. And um, so, but they are the most prestigious. I mean, when you see these graded comics, most people go for the CGC as opposed to a CBCS, which is similar i guess and they're still their grading styles and everything um oh that's a great cover man that's a classic they're definitely similar slight differences same stick it's coke and pepsi yeah <laughs> that's very true yeah thank you for um showing those off because i don't think i think i may have one cbcs but um i don't have it on me right now so um Basically, the, the big news with CGC and with the grading company itself is that within the past year, they have raised their prices for grading comic books twice and their production has not gotten any better. And this is just my opinion. Oh, that's um, a fact. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. So it's not subjective. That's that is strictly <laughs> objectively. Okay. Um, so first of all, let me ask you brother so like you said or like i was talking about before you've been doing this for a while you've been collecting comic books your whole life your dad has been collecting since the 60s right mm -hmm. okay yeah. so By this is c2 i was just raised in it you know okay so this has been something that you are um yeah have just been raised in and so do you remember what your first book was that you sent off to CGC or um, like when I guess you started sending books to CGC? My first CGC book was a purchase. Like, so I, I started buying books okay. already graded. Yeah. Like, you know, there's that, there's that horrible thing where people who resell, they feel like they just have to get every penny they can. So they grade books because it does increase the value of the books when you can get a mm -hmm. guaranteed quality assurance of that book. It raises the price spaces versus like a raw book. So I couldn't find a Hulk 102 raw to save my life locally. And I passed up on a few graded ones that came through and I ended up biting the bullet and buying a graded one. And then you just kind of get this fever. You're like, you know, it does look nice. It presents well. I get it. So eventually, not long after that, I sent in my first submission to CGT with like a handful of books, like uh, the first and second appearance of Gambit, uh, the first appearance of The Crow. Oh, nice. So it was yeah, like, yeah. They were very personal to me. You know, I grew up loving The Crow. It was so cool. And I stumbled up, uh, upon that book. At a, just, it was gifted to me. I couldn't believe it still. But uh, so I sent in a few of them, and the experience was actually pretty good. You know, I, I felt good about doing it. It's just, it's one of those things. The money is just weird. Like, you know, do you want to, you want to pay to have your books encapsulated or spend that money on more books kind of thing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, especially because if you keep it for yourself, it, for your like personal collection to display it, it does have that high shelf alcohol or something, you know, where you like your top shelf stuff 
is going to be graded. Um, and then more of your raw stuff is either for reading or just to have the, the full run of something. But there is something, like you said, I, I agree with having a slabbed book that just makes it a little bit different, a little bit more special. Um, you get the fever. There's, there's definitely a <laughs> slab fever. You're like, man. You got, I mean, it's kind of like uh, when you collect a few issues of like a run and you go, well, why not just get the whole thing? You know, yeah, just, exactly. There's yeah. And then you, yeah. yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, so with that being said, some of your first books that you had either bought or that you had sent in were fairly affordable, um, I'm assuming. And now we're getting to a point where like a lot of collectors, a lot of sellers, um, a lot of just fans in general are asking themselves, is it worth the, the prices? So, um, could you kind of elaborate a little bit more on what you were paying initially to send in just one book uh, with a subscription that you had and like kind of the turnaround time initially for when you were first doing that? So when I first started submitting was before their, uh, their wait times got really extended. It was kind of at the standard length of time. You'd expect your stuff back anywhere between two to four months, you know, two on the really quick end, four on the long end, three on the average. And that's what they were advertising. And this was when their prices were $20 a book if you didn't have a membership. There's there's mm -hmm. the non-member tier, and then there's two different paid tiers. You know, there's a standard paid tier and an elite paid tier. Both of those gave you a discount on every book you submitted. Plus, they come with uh, a credit for the price of the, uh, the tier itself. So if you bought that $150 annual tier, it would come with a $150 credit. So in theory, I was paying $18 a book to submit a single book. And uh, that that that's not a bad deal for sending your books off and being nervous about them being gone for a while. And, you know, and then when you finally get them back and feeling happy, you know, you, you get hit with that charge of a couple of books and it adds up pretty quick, you know, like five mm -hmm. books, roughly $20 a piece, throw the shipping in there. You, you spent close to between $150, $200, depending on the shipping costs and everything. So you're doing all this without your book. So it's a really uncomfortable feeling at first, especially you know, that first submission, you're sending in your closest books to you. These are the first ones that you have to get graded. Yeah. For whatever reason at that time, those were your top books and now they're gone. And now you're giving these people money and you don't have them. But it all turned out to be a comfortable process as long as they came back and they weren't cracked from the shipping or you've seen the videos, mm -hmm. there weren't any errors in them or rogue scratches on them, which I mean, we all see those horror stories. But reality, you know, that doesn't happen very often compared to the volume of stuff that they're doing. But uh, it was it was a decent process i was happy with it i was comfortable with it and it was kind of after that first time a lot of the nervousness goes away really fast yeah it is kind of odd to think that someone else is holding your like personal books like your favorite you know mm -hmm. keys that you want to keep um but for a two to four month turnaround time in in my opinion that's not too bad like considering yeah. that they have to receive it. They have to go through an arduous grading process, actually encapsulate the book, and then send it back to you. Two to four months is not terrible. Not um, so then once we saw the pandemic hit, though, um, we saw a massive influx of people kind of sending their books into CGC and CBCS. Mm -hmm. So much so to where the graders now had like they just didn't have enough on staff to uh, grade the amount of books that were coming in anywhere from modern to like golden era books that people just wanted to send in because they either um, needed the money to resell, you know, on the aftermarket or secondary market, or because they wanted, uh, they had extra money and they wanted to spend it by encapsulating their books. Did you, um, I know you and I talked briefly about it um, before we we started the video, but um, kind of give us your take on how this all came to be and why CGC really started seeing this influx and how the price increase like affected that. Yeah, I think all the tells are really, if you just look outside of the comic collecting, you know, like there's a huge secondary market for everything, sports mm. cards, vehicles, even houses. We saw everything across the board just go crazy because with the number of people that were not working that still needed to make income, they leaned into the secondary market. Yeah. We have the internet and stuff like that where 
anybody can become a small businessman or small businesswoman just with their phone taking pictures and posting stuff so like you mentioned there's probably a ton of people that took to their collection and wanted to start offloading or people that knew that they weren't going to be working for a while who might be reading comics started that process of flipping comics and it became a huge source of income for them i can't think of how many uh, actual online comic shops that have popped up in the last two years alone and every single mm -hmm. one of those you know they all offer that here's our exclusive cover get it for $30 now or get it pre-graded for $80, you know? So they're they're getting these artists to do these covers and they're sending in large piles of covers straight to CGC and uh, as well as I think another big one. And then you have to point it out is when this COVID hit, there was an influx of in-house signing events at CGC. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the fence about now because uh, these artists, these writers, these creators, they would make countless appearances at cons all through the year, meeting fans and getting paid to be there and sign books. They were no longer getting that income. CGC is offering them a platform to still make some money doing what they do as well. And it also gives the fans access to those things. So that's kind of a double edged sword. I think it really backed them up on their standard turnaround process, mm -hmm. but it also provided us something we would not have otherwise. So just just a perfect storm of stuff really that's a great point i didn't even i i forgot that they had that signature series signing that they'd have those creators in-house because for for those who who may not know the for cgc signature series books uh cgc has to witness the signature on the book for it to be encapsulated in that type of uh, slab. Um, so, the, I mean, like you said, that's a perfect way to get a lot of books, a lot more books sent in, but I don't even know if they were necessarily ready for no. that amount. And all of um, the signature series stuff takes precedent over the normal submission stuff. True. With true. the signature series stuff, they guarantee you like almost an express turnaround time. I, I've, yeah. I've sent a few off to the current Perez signing yeah, that they have yeah. right now George Perez went above and beyond for us fans and is doing the last hoorah and then going to spend the remainder of his time with his family mm -hmm. but uh, CGC will have him there all books must be there by the 31st of this month but uh, they express those books they tell you on all the signature series information for the in-house that they'll be encapsulated and expect a like a five to eight week turnaround time that's like super oh, wow. impressed for their normal turnaround time I was going to say that's great oh my gosh and I mean, to have a legend like, like Perez to, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you read that Facebook post that he had left. And I mean, the, the man is, like I said, an absolute legend. Um, so for him to do this for the fans is pretty incredible. So Little pro, yeah, yeah I, I love that he is taking the go in my last days. I want to spend it with the people who made these comics great mm -hmm. um which is so rad but side it note goosebumps, um, it? It, gives you oh, a, it it does i, I mean uh, i'm not gonna lie i i totally teared up when i read his mm -hmm. his message to the fans it was yeah, like i've been fortunate enough to meet him a few times my mom god love her she even has stories of uh hanging out with george prez and his wife at cons decades ago just sitting there with george prez barefooted and his wife talking about the <laughs> making him those shirts that he wears and stuff yeah yeah great, that's great so guy. awesome dude what yeah absolute um just the like the realest of the real and like mm -hmm. what makes what makes comics like great is is guys like him in this mm -hmm. industry um so and I mean, we could do a whole video just on some of his classic covers and, and stuff that he's done for this, um, for, for the industry. But I do have to get into the main event here, which is what we've been, you know, kind of leading up to essentially, which is the now six to nine month wait time. And, and that's on a good, on on a good, good day. day. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And now a 24 or 26 dollar i book think we're up to 24 dollars okay modern yeah. for so for now uh 24 dollars per book uh price increase without any promise or any uh any type of what's the right word here guarantee um, and improvements yes thank you for that 
Um, cause at least from, from my friends and, and from those who've sent books in, they haven't shown any type of proof that the, the, the price increase that happened in April have given them more incentive to create quality products or quicker turnaround times or whatever it is. So coming into this, I know that you feel very strongly about this because you are a collector and um, someone who is who is a, a avid CGC user. So with all this being said, I even think I saw on the CGC uh, Instagram, your your comment was like one of the highlighted comments on the first thing, which is so funny. Um, but yeah, so I, I really, this is why I, I uh, wanted to have you on here, man, because I think your take is really important. And I think a lot of people need to hear kind of what's going on. So what, what was your initial thought process and, and how do you feel about this all kind of coming to fruition? The initial thought process was just utter shock, mm -hmm. like legitimate shock because uh, it has not been long since the last price hike. Like you mentioned, this is two within a year. I think it's roughly around like April when they did the last one or something like that. But we, we've seen no improvements on turnaround times. We've seen them actually get pushed back farther. The last price increase they did, we did see them update their website. So that was a good sign. You know, we saw them uh, change up their process a little bit because there is this void time with CGC. You send into them and your book's just in limbo for <laughs> weeks on end before they scan it into their system. You have to check right. the shipping on your end to even know your books made it to them safely. And you don't even know if they're safe. You just know they made it to them. So they did complete that. They bragged about it. They posted pictures of green lights. We're good to go. We've caught up on our back stock. And all they did was they kept the lead times the same, just switch up their process where they scan your stuff in sooner, which is appreciated. So we saw those little improvements and it makes you feel hopeful. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next thing that's going to happen with this new organization, this new restructuring is they'll start getting their house back in order. But instead of us getting that announcement, they hit us with a, guess what guys? New year, new us. You know what I'm saying? We want to increase the prices. You love us. Remember that. You love us. They're like snake oil salesmen is what I felt like. They're like, you bought our product. It didn't serve you right here. Buy more of our product. It'll fix it. That's Damn, dude. I mean. it re yeah, it really is like a betrayal on the highest level. Yeah. You know, it's it's like, hey, we, yeah, it's, it's like, hey, you know, we, uh, we love you guys so much that we're going to make our, our prices even more, you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, we'd kind of talked about a little bit, uh, before we, we recorded, but you know, a lot of people will say, well, Hey, it's just $2. I mean, they went from $22 in April of 2021 to now in January, they'll be going to $24. Like what's the big deal? What's everyone getting? Well, the thing is, like you said, for for those who are flipping comics for those who are selling um you are essentially now having to pay from 2020 prices we're talking six dollar difference per book. um per for, book. One, yeah. for one book and if you're sending in 25 because their maximum amount i think at one time to fit in those boxes is 25 books yeah that's the pre-screen max i think that's all they let you submit at once is 20 books or either 25 for a pre-screen i'm not mistaken. okay so with that number, I mean, yeah, it, the, the, it's kind of like, uh, pennies on the dollar that just continue to collect and, and, and build up to the, to the point to where, when you're about to check out, you're like, how can I financially like, you know, say that this is going to benefit me in the long run? Um, because I know a lot of these guys are trying to take their books, their raw books, grade them and then sell them. But I mean, you may, and so once they get that, that book back after potentially a year, that book is now either cold, like no mm -hmm. one's talking about it. Um, the book has either dropped exponentially in prices because, you know, like I said, it, it has no key value or it's, you know, not as hot as it used to be. Or now um, they, they will break even because of the prices that they initially had to purchase through CGC. And now they're selling the book for essentially what they had to pay for it, I guess. So there are a lot of things that kind of come into play here. But another overall, big thing is the facilitators. People don't take into account that there's a lot of people that are facilitators, third parties that you send your books to them because you don't deal with CG, CGC or CBCS and they do all the handling, submitting, packing and sending to you. A lot of those people, they have to get stuff sent to them. Like you might send your books to a facilitator today, but they might not have the order ready to ship and submit for a month. 
So they just charged you based off of old prices. And then CDC and CBCS did it as well last year. They don't give you very big fair warning here and they just hit you with a price change. So there's numerous comic shops that facilitate for their customers, uh, third party facilitators that are getting kicked in the shin for being loyal customers. And and that's that's the thing that is so upsetting because um, now you and I are are big readers uh, of 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 comic books of modern comic books of of like kind of older um, bronze silver gold whatever um, but I don't necessarily uh, I'm not as well versed when it comes to the CGC grading process and what that looks like and so I know for someone like you just how upsetting it would be. Um, and I'm not even in that kind of realm. So uh, that's why I really appreciate you coming by today, man, because it to, to hear someone who is actively in this kind of market and in this industry, um, not just reading the books, but also utilizing these grading companies for their books. Um, it's interesting to hear their, you know, your, your take on these kind of things. Yeah, and I don't sell them. So it's just literally a price hike for me to have to eat the cost. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not submitting stuff to flip to let them fund the, themselves kind of thing. I'm just yeah. these are my personal prized items. I'm trying to just make them how I enjoy them and they're limiting the amount that I'll be able to use their service, you know. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Damn, dude. That's that's even more tough to hear because like I, I could say, well, at least maybe like you'll send in five books for yourself and then the rest you can maybe sell. But it's yeah. like, no, these are just straight your collection. Yeah, I don't know? I don't buy I don't buy the books to sell you know like i mentioned yeah. to you we have books like from the past decades that are just getting put up for like two dollars three dollars just we're trying to move to get out of the collection we're not yeah. submitting those books to get max dollar off of them and investing in our collection to profit bigger we're just clearing space so i don't it is what it is you know when you have yeah. money, you can enjoy it when you don't know oh well so here's my uh here's my final question for you before we we end the video where where do you think collectors fans readers where do you think we go from here with this this major price change and major like honestly a a change in the company of cgc um where do we go from here and what does this look like for the future and, and how can we potentially uh make this a little bit better in all sincerity i where we go from here, I think we just need to make sure we have our seatbelts on because we're, we're going no, we're going in the same direction. It's just going to be bumpy because yeah. it's, it's really uh there's not there's not there's only three well there's four real grading companies one that's not even recognized in like the running but you have EGS which is brand new they don't even have their own mm. patented slabs but Tony's a great guy who runs that company and they're worth checking out uh, PGX which nobody really leans to for anything. And then so you have CBCS and CGC, and we're seeing the same thing starting to happen with them over at CBCS because of the influx of people that have moved over there since that last price increase. So we're going to see how they handle it moving forward, expect more price increases. We've already seen their lead times expand, but yeah. I think we're just kind of stuck where we're at. CGC, like you mentioned, is the gold standard of comic grading. Uh, just like with sports cards, they have PSA, you know, it's just, it just is what it is. And now that CGC is owned by a hedge fund company, uh our concerns what like customer concerns are out the window it's bottom dollar now you're trying to make a board of people's wallets happy that's your number one priority now so they're going to do whatever it takes to accomplish that so buckle up it's going to get bumpy well i uh unfortunately i agree with you um because i i don't see this getting any better before it gets um, or I see this just staying the same, if not getting worse before mm -hmm. it gets better. Um, because now they're going to have another influx of people sending books in, um, so that they don't pay for the 24, you know, per book, but they pay for the 22 per book. So they're, you know, their wait times are just going to be the same, if not worse. So it really, it worries me with the, uh, you know, maybe we'll see a drop in a lot of books, you know, and I know a lot of YouTube channels do CGC unboxing and stuff. So it's going to be tough for the collectors, for the fans, for the readers. Well, we know um, the market's coming down. The the comic market is the prices are coming down across the board from the COVID true. spike. So yep. maybe yep. things will slow down in general. You know, we're just getting back to a little bit more normal mm -hmm. where people are getting used to the new normal, however you want to put it. 
but maybe we'll see like just that secondary market slow down just enough that where they can get their house in order. So maybe they, they announce this price. This is my thing. This is my big hope. You know, I don't, I don't yeah. put any weight on it, but I hope that they see the wait times coming down. They know that they're about, they have an ace up their sleeve. They know that they can put this price out there, really shake people up, but then hit them with those quick turnaround times because they've, you know what I mean? After the fact, we have seen people yeah. submitting and getting back in less than a month. There's been a lot of inconsistencies happening where they've been experimenting with their process of receiving, grading, encapsulating, and returning. So maybe they're they're confident that they're about to have it handled and they just slapped us in the face first. Now they're about to give us a hug. Yes. And that would be the ultimate hope as well. Uh, if, if they come back and they turn things around and they go like, listen, it was worth your time. It was worth your money. Because now we're, we're, we are caught up and we're going to give you a better product at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. We'll see if that actually happens. Because yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when we're, we're talking about this price hike happened within a couple months. I mean, yeah, we're talking April to January mm-hmm. of 2021 to 2022. Yeah, so yeah, that's not a lot of t- I mean, two years yeah. maybe. Yeah, there's, there's still books there from the original price. Before yes. they did the price yeah, increase, yeah. they still have a huge amount of books. Not just a few, huge amount of books from the original $18. The 2020 um, yeah. prices, yeah. Whew. Damn, dude, that hurts. But then, <laughs> that hurts. Then, there's also people that have submitted in 2022 and have already gotten books back. Oh, Not wow. Not a friend that like, okay. does the express or the walkthrough stuff, you know? So, yeah. There's people that are getting frustrated and using a lot more people using the high end quick move through and that's slowing everyone yeah. behind them down, you know, money talks, unfortunately. Yeah, the um, the thing that I, I do have hope for, I guess, with this is that, like you said, either they have something up their sleeve that they're not sharing with us that they are going to hit us with on the back end or that we see the prices decrease uh, of in comics across the board, whether that's raw or graded so that people can now start getting their hands on books that they originally would never have been able to. I think that for me would be something that would be really awesome to see. I know you are a huge collector of, uh, of the Hulk series of mm-hmm. the Hulk run. Um, almost, you just almost got it complete almost less than a hundred and- issues away. Whew. And you that's had just come out with a video. Astonish, yeah. That's counting tales to astonish 101 yeah. issues. Yeah. You had just come out with a video not too long ago, kind of recounting what you're looking forward to in the new year. And one mm-hmm. of those was getting the original one through six, correct? Of yes. uh, Hulk. Any, yeah, just any one issue because I missed I missed it like four times in 2021. Whether I was at work and a local shop reached out to me because I walked in the door and I just wasn't quick enough. Or I went to a con and I just wasn't feeling their prices. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't just buy willy nilly. Right book, right price, right time. That's the only that's way. Smart. Yeah, that's smart. And so, with that being said, I think uh, I'm hoping at least that, like I said, these prices will start to dwindle a bit, mm-hmm. so that those, you know, those books originally that you were like, man, I'll, I, I can, I can maybe only do one for this year, maybe in the financial status of maybe I can do two or three now because it's looking so much better. We'll see. Uh, Like you said, I'm not holding my breath for anything like that, you know, at any time soon. But, um, well, I, uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming by, man. Uh, it really is nice to have someone who is in this different realm of collecting to kind of talk about this stuff because, um, not only do you not, or not only do you know a lot about it, but you have personal experience with it that you can speak on um, very intelligently. Uh, so, like I said, man, I, I really appreciate you coming by. Um, do you, before we head out, do you have anything that you want to plug or anything that uh, you're looking forward to um, after this uh, this video should air? I'm not sure when this airs, but on uh, Monday, January 10th at 11 a.m my uh, big 1000 subscriber giveaway celebration entry video. Yeah, that that'll go up on my channel. Tons of prizes. Uh, if you do not own slabbed comic books, this is a great opportunity for you to win a few because there'll be slabbed comics given away signature series ones, all the stuff that we talked about. You can actually see in that video and actually win as well as original art from Green Lantern. Annual number three will be in there. Uh, artist yeah. Jang has donated pieces. I'll have a 
panel of no less than eight people joining me. Uh, content creators from all over YouTube are coming to hang out and all bringing prizes. We're going to have a huge throwdown. Uh, it's kind of late putting it up, but uh, yeah, I want to celebrate and say thank you to all the people that uh, make it possible and come by and check out the channel, hang out and talk trash and talk comics with us. That's awesome, dude. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, I will look forward to, uh, to being there. I, I never win much in terms of uh, you know giveaways, but hey, I'll, you know who, who, you, gotta, who you gotta play to win, though. You gotta play. <laughs> yeah, that's Don't true. Play to never win. That's true. Um, well, cool, man. Yeah, like I said, I'm really looking forward to it, and it's it's a huge thank you to your fans, which I think is even more more awesome. And to have all those guys on the panel like that is super cool. Um, well, yeah, like I said, thank you again for, for swinging by. Uh, I appreciate you being on the channel, and uh, hopefully we can have you back on sometime soon. Yeah, we'd love to be.